right, let's see if we're on here. It was now streaming on YouTube, sweet. Make sure I got, uh, make sure we're looking good here for the camera. All right, let's see what we have, bear with me just a second, my friends. All right, hold on just a second. What a busy day here for old Josh. There we go. Turn that guy on. Oops, there we go. And there we go over here. All right, sweet. Looks like we're large and in charge. Let's go to chat, that should work. Nope, that's not working. Go to, not there. Come on, man. Gonna open up for me here, YouTube, or what? I wish YouTube had their, they used to have a good live stream thing uh, using the Google Hangouts. Now it's Google Zoom. I like the Google Hangouts thing. That was pretty sweet. Uh, as a Google, no, Google Meets is what it's called. I think the Google Hangouts was pretty good. I don't know why they got rid of that. Um, but it's hard to live stream on, on YouTube. It's not hard to live stream on YouTube. It's just hard to live stream. Uh, Zoom is better, frankly. So I like Zoom, but uh, I wish they'd go back to that, um, uh, the Google Hangouts thing, because that was pretty sweet. What's up, Pablo? All right, hold on just a second. Let's get comments up here. Hey, Rob, Daniel, hey, Josh, I'm live. Rob, pulverizer. Um, come here, buddy. Uppy, uppy. Come here, come here. Um, so a couple of things. The uh, uh, I was gonna let me just uh, hey, Rob, what's going on in Worcester? Um. So we'll get into a couple of things on retirement planning today because I do want to go over that pretty heavily because uh, I've been getting a lot of emails uh, about various retirement planning aspects. And I, and I want to go over this to some degree um, uh, regarding that, you know, the risk of retirement planning with the commie virus now looks like behind us because we uh, we beat back the commie virus. Now the media needs something else to scare us and they're going to scare us by riots in the street and we're all going to die. And there's going to be race wars and this, that and the other. Is the whole thing silly, but the media is good at what they do, which is uh, scare people for sure. Um, and that friggin' takes me off, but what are you going to do? Um, all right. Ooh. Cool up here. Right on, right on Rob. Um, so, so I want to share with you an email this guy has sent to me. Um, and it's pretty interesting actually, because I think a lot of people do this and they, and they make a mistake in these regards all the time. Um, all right, so let's see what we got here. So this guy writes me, he goes, uh, uh, Hey Josh, YouTube sub here. Appreciate you trying to get perspective of my own scenario and how feasible it is for me to retire. I'll be 62. Wife is younger. Uh, they have some kids who are still at home. All right. So this guy's 62 with children, 17, uh, no older than 17. That there's something about that is of interest to me. Uh, I've been paid well for my career. My wife is right. We've raised uh, a bunch of other kids too. They live in a, in a North state uh, no mortgage, no debt with uh, se over seven figures in retirement accounts. Uh, Social Security at 62 will pay me 2K a month. And then I can add family at home until 18. Not sure how much this adds. I don't know either, but it's definitely so. I think the max on Social Security is like 4,500 when you fa factor in family. Am I in a good spot? What would be your top three concerns? All right. So am I in a good spot? I, I, I mean... I have no idea if you're in a good spot. And I emailed this guy and he emailed me back. But it's like, dude, I, I, how can I answer that question if you're in a good spot? You're missing the the biggest the thing is always is is what? It's your expenses. I, I just, uh, if there's anything on my YouTube channel I want to get on top of people is, the, is the, if you don't know your expenses, we don't know if you're in a good spot. Nothing else is more important. Your expenses, first and foremost, are the most important thing. If we don't know your expenses, I don't know if you're in a good spot. You're in a good spot. I mean, he's got no debt, so presumably he's in a great spot. But we have no clue, none. I mean, if he's spending hundred thousand dollars a year, he's got one million bucks. That's not in a good spot. If he's spending, you know, twenty thousand a year, he's got a million bucks. That is in a good spot. So I emailed him back. I said, "You're missing something, man. You know, the biggest thing." And I can't stress this enough because this goes back to my thing on. Um, should we be worried about retirement, you know, given 
everything that's going on. You know, we there's articles saying don't retire now because of coronavirus. I'm sure there'll be some saying don't retire because of the, uh, um, I mean, whatever. I don't even know what else it could be. The Cold War that we're going, I, it's nuts. And, and I'm just sitting there thinking, not one of those times, not one time do these people say anything about expenditures. Not one time. Pablo, you are really being a stinker. Hold on a second. Let me get this guy. Come here. People want to see old Pablo. There we go. My name is Pablo. I live on the second floor. I live on the second floor and I like to dance. Hey, but not one time do these uh, retirement, you know, naysayers talk about expenditures. I mean, I'm sure there's one time and it freaking pisses me off. I'm like, wait a second, man. You're going to tell people that they're, they're, they're running at risk of, uh, of running out of money, but you have no clue about their expenditures done whatsoever It's nuts. And so, I just I, that frustrates me to no end. If someone doesn't talk about expenditures first and foremost, that someone is not talking about retirement planning. If it's a professional, if it's a guy or a lady, Susie Orman on uh, YouTube, not just YouTube, but these other things, it's irrelevant. So if you're looking at retirement, the first thing you have to look at is how much do you need? Now, the issue is a lot of people don't know, they never retired before, but you get a pretty good gauge by just saying, okay, and again, I go back to this all the time. Median household income in the United States is $60,000. If you're working, making $60,000 a year. Now, median means 50% of the people make more, 50% of the people make less. So if you're working, making $60,000 a year, you immediately subtract 7.65% from FICA, immediately. Now, a lot of those people in, the, in that average, or median, I should say, aren't working anymore. They're retired or whatever. But not the vast, vast, vast majority of us are not. The vast, vast, vast majority of us are working paying 7.65, 6.2 to OASDI, and uh, 1.45 uh, uh, to hospital insurance, HI, Part A. I pay both because I'm self-employed. Yes, yeah, right. I pay 15. I know. Pablo's like, what, Dad? You pay 15%? Yeah, 15%. Pablo can't believe it. Can you believe that? I pay 15% to FICA, Pablo. Oh, that makes him tired. And so what happens is you're saying, okay, if you're self, not self-employed, you're just W-2 employee making 60000 a year, you immediately subtract 7.65. Then you subtract whatever your taxes are. And again, I'd say a simple 11% is probably a good place to look at it. And you subtract whatever you're putting away for your 401k. And you're going to find your income is probably your net is about 43000 And you can do that for any income level. But then you say, okay, that is probably a good starting point to what I need relative to what I had before. And you go from there. I hope that makes sense. It's a big deal. And I think a lot of people miss this. And I think it's bad that they do. Um, star of the show is here. Yep. Right on. Right on. Uh, let's see. So I want to talk about that. Uh, Sharon's from Newton. Right on. Oh, I love this guy. I can't, my friends, I cannot tell you the enjoyment that this little sucker has brought to our family. It's insane. I'm just like, look at this guy. Hi, Pablo. This little, this little monkey butt. I just cannot tell you how much this guy has just added to our uh, our lives. It's uh, I mean, it's just as crazy. I love it. So anyway, hello, Jill, hey, Craig. I don't. I did not send out the email notification, uh, Greg. I yeah, it's a good question. I uh, I I I probably ought to, frankly, um, but I I don't. I just haven't. I haven't done it uh, at all. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, I, I don't think I've ever sent out an email notification saying I'm going live. Probably not a bad idea. Uh, I don't have the Schwab Intelligent Portfolio yet. Um, so USA moved to Schwab. Everything's at Schwab now. And uh, and I don't have the uh, Intelligent Portfolio yet. Everything is still in, I hope, uh, v, um, VTV and VDIGX. I'd be freaking ticked off. If they sold out of there and put me in an Intelligent Portfolio. I have even logged in. So when USA moved, over, I've got a couple of emails from Schwab, you know, that, uh, you know, log, I have, I just haven't done it yet, uh, but I probably ought to, um, I'm not going to go into the intelligent portfolio, uh, pulverizer. I got no qualm with a lot of people are, are like, there's too much cash. I, I just, I, I don't, I don't care, but I, I'm just going to keep with what I got Just buy the index and be done with it. Oh, it turns out I had, I looked at my M1 account. Uh, so my M1 finance account, which I put a decent amount of money in there on a regular basis. Um, which is nice because it's growing pretty quickly. But anyway, I forgot. I don't just have VBK anymore. I did add, in fact, I'm not even adding to VBK. I'm adding, it's all VT, uh, uh, whatever the total stock index is, VTI. Uh, so whatever that is, is what I have. So well, I've been telling people I got three holdings, VBK in my taxable accounts, VTV 
and VDIGX in my IRA, that's been a lie. I actually had forgotten that I have VTSAX or the, the ETF version. I think it's VTI in my taxable account as well. So I'm not even adding to VBK anymore. Everything I have is going into V. VTI because I just I want to uh, be in the index for sure. So just FYI, that was my essentially my four holdings, and I don't think I'll ever change those for a long, long time. If it, if I ever change anything, it'd be moved to VTV to VTI. But I at this stage, I'm I'm too stubborn. I'm just going to keep it VTV and let the chips fall where they may. But I am building a presence in VTI uh, with my monthly contributions, actually by week every two weeks into VT uh, VTI. That's a total stock index right there. So that's that's all I've got. Um, yeah, some people say I do want to address. One guy said, or a couple of guys say, uh, uh, you know, they don't have a talk about people who look at Schwab Intelligent Portfolio or hire somebody. They say they just don't have the intelligence to manage intelligence to manage their own money. I said, and managing your own money is not it's nothing to do with your intelligence. I mean, my goodness, man, look at long term capital management (LTCM). The smartest guys in the room, they almost took down the entirety of the capitalist market, capital markets back in the late 90s. Um, man, managing money has nothing to do with intelligence. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with keeping fees low and being broadly diversified and not moving because you're worried about the commie virus. You know, it's just, it's it nothing to do with intelligence. It just has to do with pretty simple stuff. And as long as you keep it simple, stupid, you'll be just fine. Scott is incredibly beautiful week. And I didn't, we have uh, my wife's, one of her brothers was here with his, uh, his um, uh, uh, girlfriend, which is pretty interesting because he's tall. I think he's six, four or something like that. Um, and he's white as a day is long. His girlfriend's Jamaican and she's like five foot. <laughs> it's pretty, oh man, a very eclectic group. And uh, we had a good time actually. It's uh, pretty simple. We just hung out, really did, didn't do anything, which is pretty nice. And uh, just enjoyed the weather. And uh, it, it, was, it was fun. We caught up on some stuff. It's interesting because uh, we're talking about the protests and, and she's like, it's just interesting. Like in Jamaica, she used to be a school teacher and it turns out uh, they, they don't take kindly to kids, you know, tell, talking back to teachers and whatnot. It's very interesting. I said, you know, and then she became a teacher here. She goes, no way, man. Here are the kids run the, the show. And I said, it wasn't always like that. I mean, wh where did we go wrong where the kids are now in charge and the, uh, the teachers are as fearful of the children? And the Jamaica is not like that. And they wear uniforms and all that. And then, uh, and yeah, just common sense. I, I don't know what happened to American common sense. So she's like, yeah, you can't go riding and steal stuff from, from you know, stores. That I just, we all, don't we all know this? I mean, it's, it's insane. You can't. You can't go and protest and use the protesting and then to turn around and, and steal from people. It's, you can't do that. Everybody knows this. And yes, yeah, watching some guy in the Atlanta Falcons today, he's like, apologize. He goes, oh, I've never been, you know, because he said that, something along those lines. Now he's like, apologize. Like, oh, I know my words cause hurt. I'm learning from this. Like, dude, you freaking, would you stand up for heaven's sake? Stand up, dude. You can't go using a freaking riot, a protest, a riot, so you can steal stuff. Let me stop this freaking wimp. Like, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. If my my words cause pain. What the hell is going on with these guys? It's a football player. Show some. It, ah, ah, I can't take it. Anyway, so it's uh, everyone's got common sense except here in America. It seems it's nuts. I don't understand it. Then I saw some lady getting uh, beaten by these guys. Uh, with a friggin' two by fours, man, and uh, and her husband brandished his own two by four, and they just whipped up on him. I'm like, dude, if you just that's why I have to have a firearm because they're store owners, and I think Rochester. I don't know if it's Rochester, Minnesota, Rochester, New York, but I was like, dude, this is why you need firearms because that way, if someone says I'm going to beat your wife with a two by four, uh, you freaking need to stand up and freaking defend her. You can't let these freaking thugs you know, beat down your wife with two by fours right in front of your very face. Whatever happened to freaking not punching women. And I tell you what, I, this, all right, I'll go off a quick tangent. Ice T had a song called six in the morning. It was an old rap song from the late eighties. This is when rap like Kumo D and the EPMD and that kind of rap and run DMC and slowly became the gangster stuff that we, uh, that all the suburban white kids just fell in for um, just because they want to be tough. And anyway, he had this song and it said, and I'll never forget this. And he talks about beating up women. And, uh, and I said, and then he was on the thing against the NFL where they're saying, you know, uh, 
no, don't beat up women or something like that. I said, how are you on there? You're the one who started this whole thing where it's okay to beat up women. You did that. And they'll say, of course, I'm sure Ice-T will say, oh, it wasn't, oh, you know, I'm just telling a story. So, I, but people that got in the vernacular and now we have men punching women in the face and beating them with two by fours. Screw that crap, man. It's crazy. And the husband, because he had no firearm, it was sitting there watching his wife getting beat down. Nuts. Nuts. You need to be armed, man. You need to be protected because at the end of the day, when seconds matter, the cops are only minutes away. It always has been like that and forever will be. There's not a freaking indicting on police. It's just police have other things to do. The only person responsible for your safety is you. And if you think somebody else is going to be there to protect you, just watch what's going on in these things, man. You'll see innocent people are being beaten down because they did nothing else but run a store. That's it. And people want to make off and use an excuse to take their stuff. There's no other way around that. And they, that's, that's the wrong answer. And anyone who doesn't have the guts to stand up and say, that's wrong, especially if you're a freaking football player. I know why, because he's worried that he's going to offend his teammates. I, at some point, you got to take a freaking, you got to take a stance, man. At some point, you got to say, no, this isn't right. Because people know it. I'm nuts. All right. So, uh. Yeah, right. Uh, I off myself and still had teenagers at 67. I off Debt free is golden. Yeah, man. Uh, let's see here. Hold on just a second. We got some. Oh, I also want to talk about real estate, too. I'm, a, I, I'm telling you right now, all this stuff. I've been thinking about this for real estate. I was going to do some more uh, a, a specific video on that. But I. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, all right, so here's, uh, I'm curfewed in Indy under assault from Antifa. Even the far suburb, suburbs are being threatened by these out-of-state paid protesters. Still enjoying, hey, 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 good. My friend J.D. Thompson, uh, who I know, but she says she's still enjoying her retirement, which is good because she got word uh, not too long ago about that. Uh, well, that's fantastic. We, uh, we weren't curfewed, but we did get a, a alert yesterday in Atlanta that there was a curfew at nine and then they said uh we're gonna um they had a thing that our North Fulton County uh they're gonna keep us a prize if uh if riots spread um we'll see I mean that didn't happen last night presumably who knows what will happen today um just don't fall for the hatred my friends I know a lot of people on here are probably more right-leaning uh, don't fall for racial hatred. Don't fall. It's just as silly. It's silly to do that. Don't. I, oh God. I mean, the, if the, my wife is telling me some one of her high school friends on Facebook is like, it's just. Uh, she's a white girl who's just. She's. It's embarrassing. Anyway, so she, it's just you can't fall, and she's she's just she's she's a. Uh, it's it's just. Nuts. Up. Oh, hold on a sec. Okay. Thanks, girl. Uh oh. You guys want to say hi to Maddie? Wants oh man, I keep having this freaking background. Can you say, "Hey, it's Maddie"? It's Maddie. She's going to Japan for her. Uh, you want to tell everybody, Pablo? It's Maddie. It's your, it's your twist. You don't want to be on camera. You want to tell everybody about your internship or your internship in Japan? Yeah, that's it. Okay, see you. That was you did tell anybody about your internship in Japan. No one pays a piece. Thanks for bringing the tea, girl. Maddie made this freaking kick-ass dinner night. Oh, it's like being in Italy. Oh, it was good. I had three pieces of bread, which isn't good, but it tasted so good. Olive oil and pepper. Oh, smothered in butter. Woo, it was good. Pop was sitting there the whole time like, ah, ah. like you're not getting anybody. Ah, ah. <laughs> Uh, Vic says, a lot of people living on the street, running out of money for any reason is scary. It is, but uh, uh, people living on the street haven't because they did a bad retirement planning, if that makes sense. There's no uh, at all um, degree or what's the word I'm looking for, level. They can say uh, retirement planning has gone awry for people to live on the street. I'm sure there's some. The, the vast, 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 vast majority of those are not uh, of people living on the street. I didn't fail to plan for retirement. Let's just put it that way. Um, expenses can be pretty elastic. I could spend a lot more money if I had it. Yeah. I, uh, I could spend a, uh, so the 3.8% in Medicare tax is only on net investment income, which is uh, unearned income. Just keep that in mind. 
So if you have dividends, uh, capital gains, uh, interest income is called unearned income, and you'll pay the Medicare tax. So you don't pay 3.8% on income. As we say here today, who knows where it could happen for sure. Uh, pets add years to your life fact. I Man, I tell you, I think so. I just, because they make you so happy and happy is a good thing. Being happy is a good thing. That's why that crazy Karen lady, Amy Cooper, whatever her name was, who donated to Obama, John Kerry, and Peter Buttigieg, you know, yelling at that black guy. I was like, how can you be so pissed off at the world? Do you have a dog? Dogs are a wonderful, wonderful thing. Jeez Louise. I said, like, anytime you come home miserable, just give your dog a hug and your dog will hug you right back. And then the it just floats away. And then you can calm down and relax and enjoy yourself. I don't know how you can own a dog and walk around angry all the time. It's crazy. I need to get out from where I'm broadcasting. Okay, I don't even know what that means. What happened to change your option with intelligent portfolio? What happened to change your option with, uh, it to, oh, what happened to change my opinion? Is that what you're saying, Floyd? I like intelligent portfolio. I got no qualm with it at all. I just, for me, I'm not, my issue on intelligent portfolio is some people would like to have um, professional money management, and I think it's minimal to be, be perfectly honest with you. Professional money management, where they can say, at the end of the day, we got we have someone supposedly as an algorithm really uh, keeping our portfolio diversified and uh, and 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 just watching out for it, and then rebalancing it whenever, however they do. And on top of that, with the Schwab Intelligent Portfolio, you have access uh, to qualified financial planners to to discuss stuff with. Now, when I say qualified, I say that. And just because I don't know their skill set of these guys and ladies, I don't know. Uh, but I know a number of people worked at Schwab. I know a number of people worked at Vanguard. And I, I can know, I know some are great, some aren't that good and everything in between. But you do have a group of people you can chat with, which is pretty cool, I think, without having to reinvent the wheel and spend thousands and thousands of dollars. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of intelligent portfolio. I'm just not going to get it for me because I like my funds. I got VDIGX, VBK, VTI, and VTV. And I'm, that's it. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, sir, you need to get out from where you're, oh, we talked about that because there's a protest of 8,000 people headed my way. If there is, I will, uh, I, I will go to my greater reward in peace because look, man, if loving the Lord is wrong, I don't want to be right. That's all there is to it. So because of, uh, my man Steel Fist says, if you have a, uh, a difference of opinion, you will be attacked. Oh, okay. That doesn't sound brown shirt stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, Josh, when you have a moment, uh, Craig says, I was working on right capital, uh, where you suggest putting, oh, okay. So when you, I was working on right capital, where do you suggest putting CDs? So under net worth, Craig, it's just under net worth, right? And then it'll be ad account. Um, and then just as a bank account, essentially, you know, that's literally what it is. So you don't have to make a CD specifically. Everything in ad accounts and the bank account are invest are uh, are bank accounts, so you don't need to go in there and manually put one, two, three, four, five CDs. You just don't need to do. That. I mean, you can if you want to make it more realistic. Sure, uh, but you don't need to. They're all paying 05 percent. Uh, every single CD, every single piece of cash is paying 05 If you want to actually give yourself a higher rate of return, then uh, do an investment account and like make like a Ginnie Mae or a bond fund of some sort. You know, you can put a ticker in there, that's, that's, that's fine. But uh, bond funds all pay uh, 2%. So cash is paying 0.5, bonds are paying two, stocks are paying 6.5 with the same standard deviation they had before. Um, I hope that makes sense. So at the end of the day, you have, at, <laughs> I see Tom Major, relax, Josh, uh, Josh, Steelfish, whatever his name is, Steel Fist, Steel Fist, relax, Josh is not where you think he is. Oh, I'm right here. I'm on my island in Maine, Tom. So uh, for those 8,000 people, they're going to have to hop on a boat and uh, and come to Peaks Island. Um, <laughs> oh, stop, man. Why? Look, the vast, but it's just, this is kind of like uh, the terrorists are going to get us all. If, look, man, at the end of the day, if uh, if that many people were truly engaged in terrorist activities, there'd be a terrorist event happening every day. That's all there is to it. 
they're just not that many people engaged in this stuff. It's just not. There's always whack of birds. Always. There will forever be. Of all skin colors, of all religions, of all ethnicities, there's always fruit, fruit nuts or what is it, nut cakes or fruit cakes or whatever. Crazy people is what I'm looking at. Just stop worrying about them. I mean, if they're, if they're going to get you, they're going to get you. But it, the likelihood of that happening is so minute, not worry about it. I just, it's not worth your worry. Um, but I guess people want something to worry about. You can, I, I suppose. But if you live in the suburbs like I do, at the end of the day, you got a lot of other things to worry about, like your freaking property taxes, that's for sure. Um, all right, so let's see here. Uh, it's due to the preponderance of single family households. Guarantee you Jamaica has more intact family system than we do here in the U.S. I'm not sure about that, man. I don't know that to be true, Carl. I don't know it not to be true. I just don't know. Um, but uh, I just think it's sad that Jamaica... Um, <laughs> is just more common sense than we have in America. I, I, this goes back to uh, like Michael Ramsden, R-A-M-S-D-E-N. And he worked for Rabbi Zacharias, uh, uh, R.I.P. to Ravi. Ravi Zacharias International Ministries, R-Z-I-M. Uh, Michael Ramsden is an apologist. And he goes around the world giving talks on this. He calls, he has a topic called affluenza. Well, you okay, big man? And affluenza is a disease, literally, that says you got so much money, you need a problem, you need to find a problem because you have none. And when you need to find a problem, you're going to create problems out of nothing. And that, it's just sad. Uh, oops. Let's keep reading here. Uh, if only we could weed out the small percent of bad, well, I think that's the issue, uh, is there is a percentage of people that are bad who happen to be policemen. Um, you know, the guy who killed um, George Floyd, for instance, he was 17 years as a bartender at a strip club. And he knew George Floyd. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, some some of my side are like, we don't know the whole circumstance. Man, I, I get it. We don't, I, but I just, look, we don't. I'm not convicting the guy, but let's not try to make this to be what it is not. The, the facts are this, this right here should never happen. No one can deny that. And I don't see this way. I don't think I posted a video on that, but I, was, I did a video. I just haven't posted it yet. Where it's just, how do you get, that, I don't think I did. I don't think I posted that yet, but it used to be in the infantry. All right. The infantry used to be comprised of uh, poor whites and minorities because of the draft. All right, so minorities and poor whites would be going to the infantry. When they went to a volunteer army, that's not the case anymore. A lot of people still think the infantry is comprised of those groups of people. It's not. The infantry is comprised primarily of working lower income and middle income whites. That's just a fact. Uh, with some Spanish people thrown in there as well. And, and the reason for that is because the infantry, at least when I was in, would pay you more to go to college than if you just went to a regular you know, uh, military occupation, especially. So you went to Leva Bravo because you got more uh, money to go to college than if you went to 71 Kilo, Kilo or whatever, 71 Lima, whatever it is. Um, and so that, but now it's almost like the other way. It's like the cops, it seems like, um, is, how does a big city cop, police force, recruit among... Uh, I, I, I think at some point you just got to wonder like who is going into that field uh, knowing full well that the mayor doesn't back you. You got a target on your back and uh, you just got to wonder, you know, who's going to that line of work in that capacity. And, and how can you hire a guy who's been 17 years uh, bouncing at a strip club? Um, and it just doesn't seem like that's, that's a pedigree we want our police to have in my opinion. And I, I don't know the answer. I don't know. I just wonder because the, the, it's such a controversial issue anymore. How are you going to get more quality people who aren't the scumbags to get in the, in the field? I, I don't know. I mean, it starts with hopefully the mayor supports them, right? But what's that guy in Minneapolis doing? He's like telling the, the riders to wear social, to wear masks. What the hell is that? He says it's, it's absurd if you don't want to attend church, but if you want to wear, go riot, you can just make sure to wear a mask. I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know what to do there. And I, look, I know t tons of cops on this. I guarantee they're probably right here on this video. I, they've hired me as financial planners. Uh, and the ones that I talked to are good. But I, it's kind of like the same thing, man. It's like you don't want bad, these bad people have got to be weeded out before they do bad things. It's kind of like what you'd say about 
you know, a, a, a theft. Oh, that's, he got, he, that's just the one time he got busted, but I guarantee the guy stole many times before, if that makes sense. We just happened to catch the one time, but he probably stole 10 times before. It's kind of like this bad cop. How many times has he uh, done wrong by citizens? You see what I'm saying? And the thing that just pisses me off more than anything, and I, I hate to keep using that word, but this really infuriates me, is that if you look at Ferguson, if you look at Chicago, if you look at Baltimore, the cops are essentially the tax collecting authorities for the municipalities and the mayor. Just look at what they did to the citizens of Ferguson, the city council and the mayor. Look, it's freaking insane. Look at what the mayor in Chicago and the city council did to their citizens. It's, it's, uh, and then they, they sick their cops on these people. And of course, the people don't get mad at the, the, they get mad at the cops who are literally just doing what they're told to do. It's nuts. And you sit there and say, wait a second, the, the city council, look, I'm just telling, I would invite you to read about Ferguson and what the municipalities were doing to their citizens with taxes, with tickets, with all kinds of speed, tra the whole thing is nuts. And then Chicago, I'm, I read a story a couple of years ago, this lady got a, a Denver boot put on her car for nothing. They impounded her car, they sold it at auction. She, they sold her car at auction. And she still had a loan on the vehicle. She had no car and she had to pay the loan off. And the, the city of Chicago said, sucks to be you. Uh, that's what they do. Uh, you see what I'm saying? I mean, that's, it's insane. And, uh, and, I, and unfortunately, the cops are collateral damage in this. And then you throw some, some bad people like this guy in there. And you're going to have uh, some, bad, some bad guys that are doing bad things to people. It's, it's, it's not good. Now, I don't know how you weed them out, but they got to. I would just say if I was a policeman and I knew this guy was up to no good, typically someone's got to say, look, you, we can't have you do this. You're risking my life. Yeah, it just breaks my heart, man. Uh, all right. So it looks like. Uh, oh, let's get this guy. Uh, yeah, uh, too late. You're on camera already. Hey, that's, that's my oldest daughter. She thinks she's all that in a bag of chips. And she is. We love her. Um, see, Pablo or Maddie? Pablo or Maddie? All right. So Denise says curfew in LA County is six. Santa Monica, four o'clock curfew. Protests are peaceful. Vandals and thieves are on the other streets. Right on. Um, we have spoken with a couple of real estate agents up here in the North. North Georgia says Scott, and they both said inventory is low and turnover rate is two weeks. People are, oh, okay. I want to talk about that right on. Um, uh, let's see. So uh, Scott says we, ha we have spoken to a couple of real estate agents in, uh, up here, and they both say inventory is low and the turnover rate is two weeks. All right. So let's talk about that. I think it's pretty interesting. This is something that I've, uh, I've been thinking about for a little bit. If you, uh, if you can get out of the city, so think about it, forget just let's think about this we have mayors in the city telling you what you can't go to church you can't do this you can't do that all right uh because of uh the colony virus on top of that we have mayors in these cities who aren't going to allow you to defend yourself against thug uh rioters all right now these aren't innocent protesters these are thugs most of them are antifa rioters we know this all right so we have we have mayors in the streets in the in this in the locales telling you you so you are a sitting duck not only do you have mayors saying you can't do this you can't do that because they're worried about a commie virus but they're saying you can't protect yourself and if you do you're gonna have the target on your back from the mayor if that makes sense um and so, so who i mean i know some people still want to live there but it's like the new york of the late 70s early 80s um do you really want to live there and the facts are no very very few people did it took for Giuliani to come in there and clean it up before, you know, the, the whites moved in uh, who said, oh, it's safe now. You know what I'm saying? Now, there were some people, I mean, uh, if you look at old uh, hardcore music and Gnostic Front and some of these old bands from the late 70s and 80s, I mean, they loved that craziness of New York. But you're not raising a family there. It's just not happening. And you're probably not retiring there either. Um, so anyway, what, what I'm trying to say is, so you're sitting there thinking, okay, I thought I could raise a family here, but now I can't even go out of my house. I'm essentially a prisoner in my own home. Uh, I can't, uh, you know, the governor is making us and the, the, you know, making us go to nursing homes and essentially killing us. Uh, they're violating our right to life. 
Uh, I can't go to my store. I've been sh shut down. I can't go to my church. I still pay insane property taxes. And now I can't defend myself. You know, some people are going to still de deal with that. I guarantee it. But a lot of people say, I, I don't want anything to do with that anymore. I thought it sounded good as long as it was, you know, the streets are clean and the trains rain on time. And I had some freedom, but now my freedom has been taken away. I'm moving. I can see that a mile away. And that's now the question is, those people still got properties to sell before they can buy out here in North Georgia. Let's just use that for example. Are they going to be able to sell those properties? What kind of demand is going into the city relative to what was leaving? I, I don't see how that could be equal. I don't see how it could be equal. The demand for people leaving would be higher than the demand for people coming in, I think. Now, I don't know that. And the issue with some of these places, Port, Oregon, a lot of these uh, big cities, you know, very urban rent control and stuff, there's just no building. So there's a supply has been fixed for a long, long time and because of smart growth. They're not allowing building and whatnot. Uh, so because of that, there's there's a fixed supply, a limited amount of supply. So in those places, those will still probably sell, um, I would think. But you know, who knows? I just I, it seems to me the the opportunity to invest in real estate in suburban places uh, would be pretty high, frankly. I, and, and I don't know what kind of real estate investment trust you can invest in that regard. But if I had income or uh, investments ready to put to work, I would be looking at some REITs in uh in suburban places for sure um because i think they're i, I just they're gonna be demand without i don't see any other way around that uh, the, the coronavirus is part one and now this right here is part two and i think there's gonna be some serious opportunity to uh to make to make decent income there for sure or just even just rental i don't want to mess with rental properties myself but if you have some knowledge of that market i bet you could clean up man for sure um Let's see. Oops. I think get out from where you're broadcasting ref reference that. No, I don't think that's what he was saying. Pulverize. <laughs> I don't think that's what he's saying. I think he said there are 8,000 people are coming to get you because uh, uh, you're talking, uh, whatever. I, I, the, the guy was just being weird, so I deleted him because he's, he's weird. he put a comment on there that I knew he was just being facetious. I don't have time for that. Uh, What's up, C. Foltz? Ah, I don't know who C. Foltz is, but what's going on? Why doesn't Vanguard Active Managers recommend gold and silver, says HB? Um, I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know. I think commodities are part of a good portfolio, for sure. Absolutely. Um, I, I just don't know. That's, that's a good question. That's, an, that's interesting. I, I don't have an answer for it. Common sense is inversely proportional to wealth. In, so more common sense, the less wealth, or the less common sense, the more wealth. Ted T, thanks for all the helpful videos. Got it, Ted. We got AO12345. Hey, everyone. Uh, Homer. You can't make friends with Savage. Someone has sent me that. You can't make, no, no. They sent me, oh, Marge, I'm the happy man from Happy Land. Oh, that was fantastic. Oh, Pulverizer said that cop is married to a Miss Minnesota and she just divorced him, right? Dude, that's crazy. That's nuts. Oh, that's uh, who's it on? She used to be on Fox News. I think she was Miss USA. She Gretchen something. She never did anything for me, man. I do. I, that doesn't do anything for me at all. That fake blonde hair stuff doesn't do anything for me. Uh, Rick Leffel, uh, did you add the change to right capital? They found. Add the change. All right. So on holdings. Yeah. So most if if uh, if you don't have holdings in your right capital is because I had to add it. The vast majority of you have it. I, I added. So basically for the last year or so, if you got a right capital um, through me, I uh, hold I added the holdings automatically. If you don't have holdings in right capital, it's just because I neglected to do so. So you can email me and I'll get the holdings for you under the investment tab. But basically. I don't know why I didn't add holdings automatically. I just must have missed it. But basically, anyone in the last year who's been signed for Right Capital, I automatically added holdings under the investments on the Right Capital. If you've had it for over a year, you might not have it. Just let me know. Um, that's uh, that that's that was. The, I guess that's the only thing we talked about on a Wednesday, right, Rick? I can't remember what else we talked about. On, I mean, regarding to uh, the change to Right Capital. Uh, 
Protests coming to northern suburbs. Uh, she, yeah, right. Here's we've had some really good cops killed in cold blood, but no one talks about it. Yeah, we've. I mean, that's the thing. We've had all kinds of people killed in cold blood all over the world. I mean, that's the sad thing. It is the sad. No one around. No ways around that. And just uh, there's just nothing can do. I mean, just well, there's a lot of. Arizona curfew, 8 p.m. to 5 p.m. next week. Wow. Organizations bringing uh, people into the city. You got pallets of bricks and rocks ready to go to stir things up. You know, getting ready. To, it's, Bruce is getting ready to be called up here now. My man Bruce is a, is a policeman up in, uh, up in New York State. All right. Uh, yeah, it's... it's, it's uh, it's not just a conspiracy theory. This is Antifa. I mean, we know, and you know, they're funded by George Soros and the in the commies. I mean, we know it's like, let's not, let's just call for what it is. I mean, this is a, a, a an almost an armed revolution by communist thugs. It has nothing to do with Black Lives Matter. I mean, like, I guess there are some some parts of Black Lives Matter that are crazy, but you know, protesting George Floyd inherently is not a bad thing. Uh, fighting um, and looting and arming and maiming and beating up women with two by fours. Um, it, this is all part of a communist insurrection. There's no other way around that. So by Trump declaring Antifa a terrorist organization, I know my man Tim Pool is a little bit worried about that. I'm not in the least. I, I mean, look, I, I know it could be bad in the future for, oh, you're part of the NRA, you're a terrorist organization. Well, uh, maybe, I guess that could be used against it for sure. I get that. But at the end of the day, you got to, some of these rich kid Antifas who live in their mom's basements, I mean, I, I never get a couple years back during the uh, Ferguson riots in Boston. You know, they're all white. They're all white. And I'm white. So I guess I get to say that, right? All these Antifa people are white. It's like Portland, Oregon. You know, it's just crazy. Anyway, and so uh, they, they, one guy had the intestinal fortitude to follow this guy uh, who, who protested on some bridge in Boston where they blocked traffic. And they followed him to his house or looked him up or something like that. And it turns out he lived in like Newton, Mass, or something like that, in some rich part of the Boston suburbs, and his with his mom. And the guy went to his door and said, "Why were you doing this?" He's like, "Uh, you know, he could, the guy was pooping his pants." He's like, "I didn't know." It was, I was like, "Dude, you just got to make an example of a couple of these people. Lock them up, throw away the keys, say, hey, you can't be doing this stuff.' What I would do, I mean, you see these videos all over the place, and some people getting beaten down. You're gonna be able to identify a couple." But they had that one guy in San Francisco or San Jose. He was like a professor or at least an, uh, um, an adjunct professor at some community college who hit that guy with a bike lock. And the judge basically let him off. I said, that guy should be in jail for 10 years. I mean, he literally, it should be attempted murder. He hit that guy over the head with a bike lock. A bike lock. And, uh, and unfortunately, they, uh, they let him off with a freaking slap on the wrist. I don't know if he could turn around and bring federal. I don't know how that works. But I mean, I'm just saying at the end of the day, uh, that guy should have been in jail for 15 years or whatever it is to show that you can't do this to people. But unfortunately, Trump wasn't in office. Now we got Trump in office and he'll, uh, he, look, Trump's no fool. He knows where the people are. The people are going to be on his side and Trump knows. All it takes is 5% more black vote and Trump wins going away. And if he can get that because these people are going too far in their name, by the way, Trump's going to win going away. He knows that. And I, I think Trump is going to do whatever he can to show that the, the the black folks that he is there to support them uh, from a cops being bad for sure. And then B on top of that uh, Antifa thugs who are coming in their community from rich suburban areas and destroying it and leaving a freaking cratering uh, mass alone uh, behind that, uh, that they they'll be able to live without. And uh, I, man, Trump is going to, I think there's a huge opportunity there. He's going to say, look, he's going to pin it on and say Antifa, uh, these rich white kids from the suburbs come down to your uh, uh, communities um, and they and they walk away, you know, scot-free and they leave the damage for you to police up. Oh, man, I think that's a great. I think he could make if he got five percent more black vote, he would win going away. No other way around that. Um, Well, we're going to talk about retirement planning. So we can talk about it again. Um, so retirement planning, again, if you don't know your expenses, right? And this is why we started this whole thing off. The retirement planning is simple about knowing what your expenses are. If you don't know your expenses, you shouldn't be engaging in retirement planning. Expenses drive everything. 
that's all there is to it. If you don't know your expenses, then I you or, or then what are you doing? Because that is what you're going to determine whether or not you can retire. I say this all day long. It's on blue in the face. That is the number one thing in retirement planning. Know your flipping expenses. How do you presume your expenses? I don't know, but you got to start someplace. You got to say, what do I think I'm going to spend? If you don't know it, everything else is anonymous. Everything else is, ne is negative. We don't care. I just don't care about if you can retire if we don't know the number one thing. And I will beat that until I'm dead. I'll say expenses, expenses, expenses. And then on top of that, do you really believe your expenditures are going to go up on a regular basis or are they going to level off or they can start dropping? Like we see with the BLS numbers, the Consumer Expenditure Survey, University of Michigan, all the data out there. Uh, Health and Human Services, I think, even has a study on this. Uh, I don't know if HUD does, but anyway, all the government agencies, all the research shows expenditures as you age drop. So if you're not planning like that, I, I, or if you, hey, you don't know, if you're ignorant about it, you say, I got a million bucks, can I retire? And if someone that you talk to as a professional says, yeah, <laughs> I'd say, how do you know that? Uh, so, hey, Josh, there's Hans. He said, uh, you've talked about Vanguard Wellington. 67% of, of their bond position is corporate, not a fan. Are you? Yeah, I mean, I don't like corporate bonds, Hans, but I got no, I'm like, it's Wellington. At the end of the day, oh, you okay? Good. My preference is always to have cash, Ginnie Mae, and total stock index. As I retired, as I retired, as I'm currently uh, accumulating, I don't have any bonds whatsoever. None, none, none. I got a little bit, I mean, just a little bit of cash. Everything else is the stocks. Because in theory, I'm still accumulating. If I'm retiring, the cash, Ginnie Mae, well, uh, cash, Ginnie Mae, total stock index. That's what I would do without question. But if that sometimes that might even be a little bit too much. So I say, look, if you want the one simplest solution, just do Wellington. Is yeah, it's got its corporate bonds there. I would rather you didn't touch them. I don't think they're worth the risk. But you know, with Wellington, you are paying 33 basis points, which is one third of one percent, to have uh, the Wellington hopefully uh, make you know do you okay by that? I mean, you know, these guys know what they're doing. Wellington asset management team, they've been around for a long time and they know what they're doing. So I got no qualm with Wellington as a retiree. I wouldn't buy it as an accumulated if I'm accumulating assets. I'm 49. You know, I probably won't need to withdraw my assets. I'm hoping until I'm 65 or so. So, I, you know, I got 16 years of accumulating. I'm not touching well until the 10 foot pole. If I, if I'm two years out or I just retired and I don't want the cash Ginnie Mae and Vanguard total stock index. Yeah. Wellington is a great, a great stop for that for sure. It really is. I can no qualm with it. Yeah. They got corporate bonds. That's not, that doesn't bother me. I mean, I wouldn't buy it on my own, but I, I would have no qualm with Wellington uh, buying, investing in Wellington, knowing full well they got corporate bonds. That doesn't bother me. Uh, yeah, I love Trump's press secretary. She is kicking butt and taking name, man. Uh, Harry in Oklahoma says no riots in his neck of the woods. Shocking. <laughs> oh, man. They have locks. I have Glocks as William Barnett. Yeah, man. Oh, yes, indeed. The, the Glock 19. The Glock 19. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Glocks. Hard to go wrong with the Glock. I uh, watched my man, uh, Fernando from uh, Spain, um, the modern survivalist. Uh, he, he does a breakdown of a field strip of Glocks on his video, which I'm surprised YouTube still let him put up there. It's pretty cool. Um, it's funny because... Uh, was you know the 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 firearm that shall not be named at 0.223 um you know that that uh, is the equivalent of a 556 in military terms if you don't talk about it. uh it's interesting i haven't field stripped a i guess i can say m16 um that's the military version of this i haven't field stripped an m16 in a long time but when i got my, my 223 and took it apart i still remember how to do it just like that it was it was fun i was like holy crap done i said wow that's nuts it's amazing when you uh when you take down a, a rifle that you've been using, even it's been th almost 30 years now, uh, every single day, you still remember like his, like his memory is crazy, like memory foam. Anyway, so my man Fernando, because, uh, you know, I don't fire my Glock very often. I, I mean, hell, I probably haven't fired for a couple of years. I took Maddie to the range, which Charlotte did. One of us took Maddie to the range not too long ago, um, but I haven't fired in a long, long time. Uh, but anyway, um, it's just funny watching Fernando his field strip. It's like, but a Glock's only like nine parts. Glocks are fantastic. There's no reason not to own a Glock. Absolutely. 
think it's what Glock 17, like the smaller ones for women. I think it's what is a Glock 17. I can't remember. There's no reason not to get a Glock. Not very expensive. Durable as can be. A wonderful, wonderful piece of equipment for sure. And again, at some point, there might come a time where they take, I mean, look what's going on in New Zealand, man. The firearm crimes are way through the roof, even though they ban guns. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because when they ban guns, only criminals have guns. Uh, we were drilled for 40 years to max fund our 401k, says Vic. I wonder if, if I would have paid taxes over the years and put the lesser amount of money in tax account would that have come up better for total wise. It's hard to say. I was dealing with a, a couple in a, in a, in a, a high tax Northeast state the other day, and uh, they made good money. And uh, they were kind of thinking the same thing. I, I don't think so. I think for them, I'm not sure what your income is, Vic, but for them, um, if they were to pay, let's just say, you know, 33% tax and, and then allowed their money not to grow tax deferred. So essentially they're prepaying their taxes. I don't see how that could have been better. I just think it depends on your tax bracket, if that makes sense. Um, you know, maybe even at 12, 22, that's fine. But, you know, they were in a high tax bracket because they're in a high income state and they make good money, high income tax state. And so the deferrals made sense. Even now they're going to get killed and they're going to pay Medicare premiums uh, through the roof. There's no getting around it. Um, and so it's just, you know, so we are trying to reduce the widow's tax trap simply because we know the surviving spouse is going to get destroyed. But I mean, I, I want to sweat it, Vic. There's not much you can do. But if people who are 40 years your junior right now have that same option, they really need to be looking at this for sure. Are they saving, you know, hell, 10% in taxes uh, by putting into a deferred 401k where they don't have access to? Eh, I don't think that's a good, I wouldn't do that. I, if I'm in a 10 or 12% tax bracket and I'm not in a plan that gives me a match, I'm not putting into 401k. No way, no how. Uh, See, folks, my family's back to work full time. Uh, we have 10 month emergency fund. I'm investing 20% of my net income. I have 2K left over. Is it a good idea to pay off 168,000 mortgage? Okay. So they got there. They're all working again. They have 10 month emergency fund. Uh, they have 20% of my net income that, that he or she is investing. Uh, and I have 2K left over. Yeah, absolutely good idea to pay off your more your mortgage without question, C folds. That's uh absolutely. I'd be knocking that sucker up big time. So if you got uh you know 2k a month, and I'm not I don't think I'd you know put the whole 2k in there, but let's just say it did for simplicity. 168 divided by uh, 24, you'd have that sucker paid off in seven years. Man, how awesome would that be? Seven years you got no mortgage? Kick butt technique. The, the, the thing you got to concern yourself with, C. Foltz, uh, seems like I used to know someone. I'm not, I can't see your picture very well. But anyway, the thing you got to concern yourself is not to take on other debt while you're paying off that mortgage, if that makes sense. Just be careful of that debt bomb. You really want to be careful because it's easy to start really focusing on this. Next thing you know, your credit card's at 15,000 bucks. So just be advised. Uh, Tennessee in the house, the Budify, right on. Uh, Harry said that's what he did, and Harry knows a thing or two. I know Harry. Harry said it worked for him. I, I, he's my uh, my uh, my blessings. Uh, okay, it took me six. There you go. See, folks, it took Harry it perfect, almost identical to you. Harry had 165,000, took him see, uh, six years to pay it off. You'll do probably about the same. Yeah, I mean, so Carl K talks about Keith Ellison, the Minnesota Attorney General. Uh, not only uh, ironic uh, that he's been seen with local Antifa leader, leaders, but was also charged with assaulting his girlfriend. Uh, I just, they had a lot more on that guy too. They just did not want to take, because uh, they knew he was gonna become Attorney General. That guy's a freaking piece of work. Uh, he also had a, he also showed a book on Antifa on his, I don't do Twitter. I just follow people who do that said Twitter, uh, Antifa, you know, the wave of the future, some of whatever it was. I mean, the, the guy, look, man, he's a friggin', he's a comedy sympathizer. There's no other way around this Keith Ellison guy. 
Uh, look, Minnesota, I don't know what's going on up there, but uh, if you don't go Trump 2020, I think you're lost. I do because you, I, look, 2018 is an off year. And off year elections, you always get some crazy people every single time. I mean, the Republicans have some crazy people in off years. The Democrats have some crazy people in off years. It's when they're up for re-election if they get taken out. That's what happens. And so, and, you know, 2018, uh, you had, you know, crazy AOC. AOC is just a nut. No other way around it. Ilan Omar, nut. There's a lot more to this, uh, by the way. Uh, with, uh, just a lot more of the uh, uh, of the whole thing. I, I don't want to get into it. Uh, just read the conservative treehouse. If you go to their conservative treehouse, uh, there's a lot going on that will make you just like, huh, you think, huh, what else has happened? We don't know. Um, it's very odd. The whole thing is very, very odd. But anyway, uh, Omar Enterprises. I have no idea if his relation to Ilan Omar owned the, the uh, strip club for which both George Floyd and that cop worked. Odd, huh? Omar Enterprises. Is that Ilan Omar? I don't know. I don't know. It's just odd. And yet they knew each other, George Floyd and that, and that cop did. The whole thing is just odd. There's more to this story, but it's just something to think about. I don't know. But anyway, Keith Ellison, uh, a lot more to that guy. And, uh, you know, but cranks win sometimes on off years. That's all there is to it. And uh, it, we'll see if uh, he, now he's not up for re-election now in 2020, I don't believe, but maybe 2022. We'll see if that guy uh, stays in office or not. But usually uh, a crank will win for a term and then they'll get put back to, you know, to pasture. So we'll see. AOC, Ilan Omar. Who's the other crazy lady out there? I can't Rashid something. Um, we'll see if these Rashid, something like that. We'll see if they keep uh, if they keep out there. Um, I, frankly, I like them. The more they talk, <laughs> the more votes they get for the Trumps, that's for sure. Hello, Sharon. Uh, hey, friend, what do you think of the ETF? What do you think of the ETF MJ? I have no idea what it is, man. MJ, what is I, I don't know what it is. I gave a 1,000 on DraftKings that paid off well. All right, so here's Micah. Micah is 26 in Houston TX, has household income of 200K a year before tax, is still renting and saving money for a house. Any advice for investing? Uh, all right, so uh, 200K a year renting. Uh, well, you're, you probably need to be putting money into a 401K, Micah, simply because you're, you're making 200K a year and you're married. So I'd be just maxing an index fund, uh, just a, a, a growth of, you know, ETF, I mean, an index fund of any sort, an S&P 500. That's what I do. I just say everything I'm putting in, uh, as long as you're not taking on debt, I'm presuming you have no debt. I'd just be freaking dumping every single penny I got into index funds. I do, you know, the amount that they do in, up to a match in your 401k. So if they match you or if they don't, then, I mean, you still, you sh- 200k a year that's good that's you're on that cusp right there if you should be taking the tax deferrals or not i would um i would be doing my uh my i'd be taking the tax deferrals uh simply because you're making that kind of money uh but i'd be doing an index fund just plugging away no, literally nothing simple so look at your holding look at your investment options that they have if they give you the s&p 500 index just plug plug away you know, the max you can do is what twenty two thousand or nineteen thousand. I think it's nineteen thousand this year. Nineteen thousand five hundred. If you're under fifty, yeah, I think it's what it is. I'd be. That's the first thing I do. I just try to get nineteen thousand hundred in there into my four hundred one k. Absolutely. Hope this helps, Charles. That's the island I was raised on, right there, Peaks Island, Maine. Uh, Jeff says I should pick up a Desert Eagle fifty. A E 50 cal take out some elephants man i can put a 50 cal on top of my wife's mini now how cool would that be most people aren't safe enough with glocks in high stress situations cops included they don't keep their finger off the trigger and have unintentional discharges way too much yeah i that's you know there's risks risk and everything we do uh for sure because i don't think the glock it doesn't have a safety right you got to pull once twice i can't remember what it is uh i look man i'm not look i Let's just put it this way. Um, if you're going to carry concealed, I got no qualm, or if you're carried open, I got no qualm to do that. I do think you should have um, some consistency in your training. And for me, I don't have enough consistency. Like I said, I haven't shot through my Glock in three years. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, I probably went to the range for an hour. 
in three years, that's not a consistent enough thing where I should be, in my opinion, I should be walking around uh, with a Glock at the ready because it's just, you know, I've, look, I haven't been assaulted in many, many moves. You, you see what I'm saying? It's just, you don't, you don't, in your home is one thing on the road is a different thing. I, I, but I agree with pulverizer. I don't think you should be uh, taking that, that responsibility lightly. I don't. I think you should be not taking responsibility lightly either in having a firearm in your home to defend your home though, without question. I think you are being negligent if you don't have protection in your home. A dog is a good first step, even a little Pablo. Uh, but you need to have some kind of defense. Out. And if you own a store as well, uh, you know, it's just a simple 12 gauge, you know, up uh, over under, you know what I'm saying? A double barrel, uh, something just, uh, I mean, hell, even an airsoft. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if someone's coming at you, they don't know the difference between airsoft and a freaking real uh, rifle or a handgun. A handgun's better in that regard. But anyway, either way, um, and air, nothing wrong with just you know, brandishing an airsoft. It essentially, it's a freaking uh, a BB gun, essentially, a pellet gun, uh, just to say I'm not playing around. But, uh, but you need to be responsible to defend yourself because there's not enough police and not enough good guys to do that for you. You need to, so uh charles has a desert eagle 45 uh roth are always good at 51 you might have 20 years before you start needing it lots of growth yeah i i completely agree uh the, the guy at uh who's making for guys that micah making 200k a year at 26 though um I think you can still do a Roth, but the tax deferrals, uh, the, the tax deductions going in probably more valuable than the Roth on the front end, I would think. Um, that's a tough one because he's right there on that cusp, but I would take the tax deferrals. Uh, my man Chuck has a rental value of uh, 550 with 250K mortgage. If I pay off the mortgage, I'll clear 2K after expenses. Thoughts? All right. So basically, if he pays off the mortgage, it's going to free two thousand a month up. Um, but I don't know anything about your what your balance is, the loan, how long have you had it, uh, how you're going to get the money to pay off it. I, I don't know. I don't know anything else about this. There's a lot more information um, because if you're pulling two hundred fifty from a IRA or four hundred one k, it's going to cost you what, about three thirty three. Because you have to pay roughly seventy some thousand dollars in taxes or so. So, you know, if you're pulling two fifty, it's going to be putting a thirty three percent tax bracket most likely. So it's going to cost you thirty three percent on two fifty, which would give you uh, times thirty three percent. That's eighty two thousand dollars in taxes. Yeah. So two fifty plus eighty two. Three thirty three. Holy crap! I did that in my head just like that, and I did it on my trusty calculator. I was right. So it costs you 333 to pull 250 out. I, mean, I don't think I'd do that. Can contribute only 6K or 7K over 50, so still may have funds for 401K or taxable account. Uh, zero debt, and you're not going back to so full. So I cannot agree more. Zero debt. Uh, C Fultz, I'm trying to see. I knew someone from a long time ago, but I don't think it's Fultz was her last name. Um, I can't imagine the market if Biden wins. Yeah, but I mean, the corporatists will be jumping for joy. The Chamber of Commerce, they'll be jumping for joy. So don't be shocked if the Biden wins, uh, if the market gives us uh, a little bit like, whoa, kind of like, you know, the left said with Trump. I can't, like, what's his name, Paul Krugman? I can't imagine the market. Well, it's going to be bad if Trump wins. And the very next day, we took off. I'm sure Krugman's like, oh. I mean, so don't, don't get caught up in that. I mean, there's corporatists who will benefit. I mean, just think about it. Um, I was watching my man JJ McCullough from Canada today uh, talking about uh, he did a video a couple weeks ago on this uh, some guy named Simon Weisel or something like that some freaking lefty talk about how Canada is the best country in the world but it's just all cliched stuff and my man JJ is like dude you don't know what you're talking about he's talking about Canada how it's a cent he didn't call it fascist like I will. But I mean, what happens is in a fascist, a fascistic economy, you got the big government dictating to big business how to run their business. And what they do is they don't allow, they make it very, very hard for entry. For, so lots of barriers to entry. So big business doesn't have to deal with competition very much. And they're doing the bidding of the government. That's fascism right there, without question. And so what happens now is that because the barriers to entry are very, are very solid and hard to establish to get through, 
there's no competition. No competition means no growth and stagnation. And that's what my man JJ Bacullo was saying about Canada. That is Simon, this British guy of all places, who doesn't know anything about Canada, didn't know. And so I thought that's pretty interesting that Canada, which is not very known for its uh, competitiveness, is like that through and through, very fascistic in that regard. And, uh, and that's where we're going if Biden wins. It's just there's no two ways around that. That's what happened under FDR. I mean, don't forget, a lot of the people on the left initially liked Mussolini, for instance. They did. The trains run on time. What does that make you think of? That makes you think of the five-year rule uh, plan under Stalin. The trains are going to run on time. Jobs for everybody. You see what I'm saying? I mean, that's not that different from what the uh, FDR was saying. Not certainly not that different from Stalin. And don't forget, back in the 30s, a lot of people were looking to the Soviet Union because we, we fell for their propaganda, just like we do now in China. And they said the Soviet Union is the way of the future. And we had tons of people in the United States go to work in the Soviet Union. <sighs> because, you know, freaking uh, uh, motor company people, Ford Motor Company, went to work in the Soviet Union because they thought they would have is, you know, the land of milk and honey. They are lied to. Some got executed on the great purges and whatnot. But at the end of the day, you know, they, they, were, they thought that was the wave of the future. And they read Walter Durante in the New York Times. Uh, <laughs> And, you know, they said, well, just as crazy. So that's why I say, you know, for some regard, FDR did save capitalism uh, because if it wasn't for FDR, um, the, 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 the radicals might have taken over. Henry Wallace is the world and whatnot. Now, I think FDR did some bad, 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 bad stuff during the Great Depression to expand it. And that's what Biden would be. Uh, but it's not even Biden. Biden's an empty suit. But at least FDR had, I mean, you know, he... At least he was a cult of personality. Biden is going to just be a puppet, and that's uh, that's going to be what's scary. But I'm not thinking the market is going to uh, fall because Biden wins. Um, I just think there won't be that much competition because it's all big business, big government, and uh, big labor. That's fascism one on one right there. Uh, my man uh, Kevin, fifty three, going to retire in nine years. Three years of cash we'll have on hand, waiting until 70 to collect Social Security. Man, that's freaking awesome. Ours lose the Senate and Ginsburg is replaced by another crank. Yeah, I know Ginsburg is hanging on with a thread, but more power. I mean, look, I, I wish I wish you would retire, but, you know, the country in her mind is literally at stake. And for my mind, it is, too. If we get another you know conservative in there, unlike John Roberts, John Roberts, I, a lot of right wingers giving us the bad news. Uh, look, by and large, he's pretty stable. I, some of the stuff on Obamacare. That was crap, uh, for sure. Just thing he voted for in favor of uh, the California regulations on churches. If you actually read what he, some of the stuff he said, eh, he kind of made sense. But uh, he, he's not as bad as, as Kennedy, certainly not as bad as Souter. Uh, but if Ginsburg were to retire before the election, um, pff, ugh, she's not gonna. It'd be freaking awesome. It'd be awesome. I mean, just think, if we had six constitutional conservatives by three libs, you know, uh, what's her name? Uh, Sotomayor, Kagan. Is Breyer still on there? Is it Breyer? I can't remember the other guy. I think it's Breyer. Um, and K yeah, I don't know. Some of the stuff is interesting too. Some of the stuff with Sotomayor, even Kagan, I don't have any qualm with. I mean, some look, I don't agree with all, most of the stuff, but you know, some of the stuff is it's uh, it's just interesting uh, when you you don't want to get you know, when you say oh they're on the left and you say well some of that stuff I kind of agree with. They're on the right. And you're like, well, some of the stuff I don't agree with. It's just interesting. And I don't like the false dichotomy, left or right, even though I, I do it myself. I say lefties, ah, righties, you know what I'm saying? But it doesn't matter. Uh, RV, all right, says W-2 income around 150, max out Social Security tax and have S-Corp making about 80K. Spouse will not have enough credits for Social Security. Would it be better to pay spouse for maxing out 401K and S-Corp and, or save employment tax by not paying spouse and have me get salary in S Corp and get the 25% profit share. Okay. So there's a lot of studies on this that says a, a spouse uh, who, who uh, goes to work actually reduces the social security for the husband and the unit once you're both on social security. So I don't know your whole situation. I'd never uh, even feign to give you guidance here, but before I add a spouse to my payroll, uh, some of the stuff that says a spouse will get uh, social security benefits, um, which will, which is more than half of your, uh, than her spousal benefit, 
is not as valuable as it. so basically what the issue is spouse going to work has actually reduced benefits for the household unit for social security uh, that's that's what the the consensus is for some of these social security people they say well if the spouse would have stayed home and just got half the spouse of the uh, the spousal benefit yeah the, the, they would have got more income uh in social security than, than when the spouse went to work so just keep that in the back of your mind i double i'm looking at that pretty significantly before i just start adding my spouse to the payroll that's for sure um ah mj's pot gotcha oh, okay right on right on i thought i'd talk about michael jordan man uh because i'm watching that uh whatever that show is on michael jordan it's pretty interesting actually the last dance would be better. To, okay, we already talked about that. Uh, Harry's got to run. See you next week. I threw five hundred dollars at marijuana uh, MJ, and I'd be happy to get my money back within a year. Uh, Sharon says, "I know that no one is required to take their RMD this year, but is it better to take out RMD later in the year so that it comes out of the tax IRA and just put it in the brokerage account?" Um, yeah, I, look, I'm not a big fan of just waiting to take your IRA money out uh, for RMDs, not in the least. I, I think it's, uh, I think that's not good planning by and large for most people, Sharon, because I think what they're doing now is they're going to get even more RMDs later, which are going to even more uh, affect their their adjusted gross income, which means more taxes on Social Security, tax on income, potential tax on Medicare premiums on Medicare and whatnot. So, I don't know your your cert, yeah, your specific situation, but I'd be taking money out uh, beforehand, most likely, simply because if you wait, it's just going to grow. You're going to have to take out more, which is going to be more taxable. So you, you have some control now that, that you didn't have before. Uh, am I too old for S&P index in my Roth? No, come on. No, J.D. Thompson. No, you're not too old for S&P 500 index in your Roth. Niet, as, we, as us Russian stooges say, Niet. Ball stall works well for cleaning glocks. Too much oil tends to build up. All right. Uh, I hope you all heard that. My man Joseph says ballistol, uh, ballistol, B-A-L-L-I-S-T-O-L. -L -L -L. I'm sure I'm butchering that name. Works well for cleaning glocks, but too much oil tends to build up. Good news. I like hearing that. My man Herbert says, Josh, I'm retired. I would like to do a 2% withdrawal rate for my portfolio. Should I wait until the markets stabilize? I am debt free, but I rent. Um, what, when does the market stabilize? I, that's, this is the forever, I get this question and I'm not trying to be mean to you, uh, Herbert, but when, uh, what is the market stabilized? I, I, I mean, literally it never stabilized. That's what I'm trying to say. There's never a stabilized market. Stabilized means it goes up. That's what it, everyone says, but they don't want to say what should I wait till it goes up. I'm not sure why. So a lot of people say, well, the market you know, gets back, uh, Make some so I mean, is the market stabilized down? So the S and P is over thirty three thousand. You know, it's only down ten percent off its high. Is that stabilized, or is it only stabilized when it goes up? I I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. However, if you need the money, take it out. It's just that simple. I mean, if you need the money, take it out. I wouldn't wait because well, I mean, unless you don't need the money. Uh, because when you say stabilized, that's market time. Stabilizing means it goes up. What if the market goes down and you needed the money? So I, I just I wouldn't even play. I'd say, do I need the money? If so, let me take it out now. The market on any given day can go up just as much as it could go down. I mean, that's just all there is to it. On any given year, it's you know, about 60, 40 up to down, but that's historical. But, but we don't have that much of a history to show what could happen. We just don't. So I just say if you need the money, take it. I think you're probably lucky to be able to take it now when you're only down 10% from where it was uh you know two months ago. It was down 35%. So I'd take it out now. Pablo is a killer. He is. He's my first line of defense right here. Uh, pump shotgun is good enough. Most people get back off. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, there's nothing better than the, uh, the sound of a pump action shotgun. My man, Matt Christensen, if you listen to his channel, the first thing we introduce the video is that sound. That's a, that's a wonderful sound. That's a wonderful sound. It's, it's, uh, it's just, it makes you feel good inside. You know what I'm saying? Uh, All right. I'm an excellent. So we may have crossed. Okay. No, you're not the person I was thinking of. Right on. C. Fultz. Uh, trains running on time makes me think of Japan. Yeah. Right on. Never been to Japan. I never wanted to go. 
uh sanders honeymoon there in the cccp yes he did he did honeymoon in the cccp yeah, scumbag uh anyone know if there are any riots of montana wyoming or south dakota <laughs> i saw a video the other day though of uh a Black Lives Matter meetup in a Bend, Oregon is pretty much all whites. I just, I just chuckle. I just chuckle at that. Look, at the other day, man, I just, I, I don't like innocent people getting killed by cops. It freaking ticks me off. It ticked me off when that white lady got killed by the black cop in Minneapolis two years ago. It ticks me off in this case too. It does. I hate it. I hate it pissing me off. It should piss you off too. But you don't answer this by freaking, you know, and Slate did something today, a moral equivalent, say, you're burning down the, you know, they burned down a freaking uh, uh, affordable housing complex as get ready to open next year. And that, the same people, I guarantee you're going to turn around and say there's not enough housing. Well, you just didn't provide one, but y'all burned it down. But what is that about? And the thing is, you know, it's a lot of these people are not the people in those communities. There are the people in the suburbs coming down there because they're spoiled brats. I'll, never, I'll just never, ever forget sitting on a train, come back from Philadelphia after work one time, and they're doing some kind of protest down there. Uh, I forgot what it was. And, uh, you know, so we live, you know, you're going, you, uh, what's called a speed line in New Jersey. So you go, hand out in Center City, it takes you to the uh, the suburbs of New Jersey and uh, the, the the wealthier part from which where I lived, this girl, you know, uh, uh, two white girls get off with all their signs saying they support uh, whatever it was, Black Lives Matter at the time, it wasn't Black Lives Matter, but whatever it was. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, you guys are just, I, I mean, this whole thing is just, look, I got no qualm with you protest and I just find it funny, like you you think you're hip and urbane, or, and but you're you're just little rich girls out here. And you're going to come down these communities, you're going to ride, you're going to toss rocks, you're going to call this kind of damage, and then you're going to hop on the train and go back to your rich suburbs. And yet there are real people who are left holding the wet bag. That's wrong. I, I, all right, so uh, my friend in Billings said there are only 50 protesters in downtown. Yeah, but there's only, what, a couple, you know, 50,000 people live in Billings or something like that, so... Uh, Fear says RBG is amazing. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I don't know why you all sweat her so much. I mean, so many other people that sweat, and she ain't her. She ain't the one. It's weird. I, it's the weirdest thing to me that uh, uh, her and Hillary Clinton, you know, get the left really fired up. I never understood that. There's so many, so many others uh, that you guys should be, uh, you know, talking about and yet i i'd I never understood the appeal of rbg or hillary clinton or uh, who's the other there's another one out there too i forgot elizabeth warren i, I don't get it i just don't get it there's so many other uh, ladies who've come up uh who've overcome stuff and uh and you guys choose those ones it's weird to me but be it as it may i mean i get people say well how did you choose uh oh, i'm trying to think someone on the right ivanka trump yeah i'm not a fan of ivanka trump let's put it that way uh who else another one uh uh, the lady we got here in Georgia, Kelly Leffler, or whatever her name is. Oh, speaking of which, we got our primary on Tuesday, I believe. So I'll be casting my vote for Doug Collins against Kelly Leffler, whatever her name is. Um, I think it's on Tuesday. It might be on the 9th. I think it's this coming Tuesday. Um, I don't know too many Republicans are saying, Kelly Leffler, hey, she's great. Uh, not the way you guys do with uh, Hillary, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. Thomas says, I got... Uh, 150k in cash and 600 in my 401k. I just retired Friday. Freaking awesome. 63 spouse and I will collect 3k a year in Social Security. No debt. Uh, suggestions on how much I can withdraw monthly. <laughs> I don't know. How much do you need? I mean, uh, awesome that you're retired, but I don't know how much do you need. I mean, I, I always start with the premise of 5%. I'd say 5%, you got 750. I would start with 5%. And if I had 750,000, I mean, that, is that enough? Is that too much? I have no idea. 0. 0.05, that's uh, 37,500. So that's what I'd start with. But I, you know, I don't know what Social Security gives you 3,000 a month. I, I, what is that? Uh, what, what does that have to do with anything? You're missing the, folks, you guys are missing the big thing. Until we find out what expenses are, we don't know. I, I mean, I don't care if you got 200000 or 20 bucks or name. I would always start with the 5% withdrawal rate, without question. 
Will that be enough? I have no idea. Will that be good for you? Too much? Does that have anything to do with Social Security? No, I just don't know. We've got to know your expenses. I cannot stress this enough. Without knowing expenses, it's all it's all moot. It really is. Now we're just speculating on what your uh, withdrawal rate would be. So that's what I start with. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Trey, do you invest in individual stocks and do you advise clients you do with 8% of their portfolio? I do not invest in individual stocks and I, and I don't advise people to do that. It doesn't mean I yell at them for doing it. I just, I don't give any uh, suggestions whatsoever. I had, I mean, with that said, I had, uh, I've had a couple of people with big positions and big holdings that I said we looked at and decided we need to uh, uh, reduce those positions. Um, and financial planning one one is you don't want 10% or more of your portfolio in any one uh, ticker symbol, essentially in any one position, if that makes sense. And when I say one position, individual position, not a mutual fund or an ETF. So uh, I forgot what the ticker was. Someone had a, a pretty big, uh, I think it was an oil company. I think it was Exxon now I think about it. I can't remember, there's another one too. But anyway, I've had a number of people who've had big positions in, in, you know, in a stock and uh, we just got looking at it. And I, I said, you know, in terms of dividends, uh, in terms of cash flow, in terms of its uh, debt, it was taken on. One company was taking lots of debt in which to pay the dividends. And I said, man, I think you got to get out of that because if that dividend gets kaput, you're doomed. I think you had 45% of his portfolio in that stock. I said, man, you got to get out of there because if they stop that dividend, you're done. Your whole retirement shot. I'd never tell anyone to buy something, that's for sure. But I would say you need to really revisit this because once you break the 10% in one holding, that's that's a violation of financial planning 101. Doesn't mean it's bad if you have that. It doesn't mean you're an evil person or I'm gonna yell at you. It just says, and financial planners are a paranoid bunch or they should be. And that means if you have more than 10% in one position uh, and that position were to go corrupt somehow or kaput, uh, you're gonna be in a world of hurt and we can't have that on my watch. I hope that makes sense. Uh, Would love to hear how folks steer, started investing. Uh, Hans had read an article in Red Book Magazine about mutual funds, 20th Century Ultra. I remember that fun, Hans, 20th Century Ultra. Yes, sir. Uh, it actually had American Century, or maybe it was 20th, no, it was American Century Gift Trust. That's the first one that came to my mind because I was reading some book in 1993. I used to put up uh, real estate signs at night. I've done all kinds of crazy jobs. And uh, me and my man, Brian, his brother had would do these real estate signs like KB Homes that way, Ryan Homes this way, and stuff like that. And you have to do it under the cover of darkness because in uh, in Fairfax County, in Arlington County, it was illegal to put up these real estate signs. So we you literally like hide behind uh, bushes until you know people, cops or whatever, drove by. Then you go in there in the middle of the uh, the median. You have your little freaking chisel. You hammer that in, and you say, you know, is uh oh, curfews in place for the entire city of Atlanta beginning tonight at nine. You just got a sub safety alert right now. But anyway, so we go into the median and undercover, bang that thing down. Then we take off like this. A couple times I got uh, I, uh, cops would come up on you. But anyway, um, why was I saying that? Oh, long story short, my man Brian, I said, what are you, you know, we're making good money because it's essentially illegal. Uh, my man Brian said, we're saying, how do you, what are you doing with your money? Because I invest in mutual funds. This is in 1993. I said, what's that? And he told me about it. I said, really? I'd never heard of it. And somehow I just ended up buying a magazine on mutual funds. I think it was Mutual Fund Magazine. And they, and the American Century Gift Trust, or maybe it was 20th Century. I think it was American Century Gift Trust Fund was the number one fund. So said, I'm buying that fund. So I remember calling, uh, and the lady was on there and just, you know, I said, she was, you can't buy that. I said, why? She was, it's only for institutions. I, I remember I was like freaking, I was, I was 22 years old. I didn't know my you know butt from the hole in the ground. And I said, well, I just want to put a thousand dollars in there. She was, no, it's for instance. I can't remember what the whole thing was. I said, really? And uh, she goes, sorry. But it was, I was like, uh, I remember, I didn't know, I didn't know anything. So anyway, long story short, I ended up buying the a Montgomery Emerging Markets Fund. So the next fund I bought, well, I, I looked into is the Montgomery Emerging Markets. Is that 93 or 94? I can't remember, but it's one of those years. And I got a tax form on it. And I was like, what the hell? I call him up and say, I got taxes. I, I, why do I got to pay tax? And, and the lady was like, we can't advise you on taxes. I said, well, I'm not asking you to advise me. Just tell me why. 
and she she told me about capital gains and stuff. I said, I said all over my head. I said, I don't know what any of that means. She goes, we advise you to seek tax advice. I said, uh, okay. And anyway, that was my first uh, investing. Neither one made me feel very confident when I called these people on the telephone. Let's put it that way. Uh, Paco gets scarier the deeper you get New Jersey. It does, man. I remember that. If you start going beyond, uh, I forgot what it was, the last stop. I remember that. It, it, it did. You're like, oh, boy. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Uh I hope someone's investing, investigating George Soros and all this, but he's likely too smart to have anything. Oh, absolutely. No one's uh, George Soros is just trying to keep the Nazis at bay. The Nazis, because they're in the White House. Bob Branker, right on. Radio show. Yep, yeah, Bob Branker. And then I started listening to uh um uh Bob Branker is a big Vanguard guy. I remember listening to him. Well, actually uh following him a long time ago. I used to work at Vanguard. People would say I just heard this on the Bob Brinker show. And I was like, okay. Um, and my, mine was Rick Edelman. The first investment guy I started listening to is Rick, after Bruce Williams. I listened to Bruce Williams in the, in the 80s uh, because he's always on late at night. I didn't know anything about anything. But I remember Bruce Williams. But then uh, Rick Edelman I started listening to. I've always been a fan of Rick Edelman, which is one of my pet peeves of his. He seems like he wants to go as futuristic guy, futuristic Rick, a George Gilder type as opposed to um, – it's just as odd to me. See, it's just – it seems like he's a. Uh, it seems like he's got a big head. I, I don't know how else to put that. I imagine people say the same about me. I get that, but it just seems like Rick has got a big head to some degree, which is too bad. Because um, and like that's just my. I've only I don't listen to Rick that much, but every now and again I will catch him. And every now and just like Ugh, that doesn't seem like the same guy as before, and maybe it's just me. I don't know. Maybe it's you know, me, not you, but uh, it just I don't like it. And um, and this whole thing is going to live to 150. Don't pay off your mortgage. Don't do Roth. I just, I don't like his advice. I just don't. Uh, yeah, there you go. Denise got the 6 p.m. curfew for uh, uh, for California IEA. Yeah, it's like compared uh, Margaret Thatcher. Oh, man, I love Margaret Thatcher. How come the women's movement don't give her props? Talk about a tough lady who did not rely on her looks. Oh, Margaret Thatcher, she would kick you anybody's butt on this thing right here. Maggie. Yeah, uh, Vinyl says he doesn't put any more of his, any more than 3% of his assets in one stock. I, I think that's absolutely ready to go. Um, <laughs> Doug says, curfew, maybe I should turn on the news once in a while. Don't do it, Doug, don't do it. It'll just make you panicked. I don't, oops, I only have individual, oops, oops, oops. I only have individual stocks, my fund money account. Yeah, right on pulverizer. I, that's what a lot of people I talk to. They'll have, you know, X amount of dollars in their fund play money. And I got no qualm with that. I say, yeah, just do it. Just make sure you're taking advantage of the tax code. If you can get some uh, sell out of tax loss, sell that sucker, lock that loss. And then, you know, if you like the position, wait 30 days, to rebuy it. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Yeah, Money Magazine, dude. I could not agree more, Doug. They they went everything goes left. Old Sullivan's Law, John O. Sullivan. What isn't outrightly right or uh, whatever? Yeah, it's not outright. It's the word I'm looking for. Whatever isn't explicitly right, maybe that's the word I'm looking for. Will ultimately be go left. Everything. If it's not explicitly to the right, it will always go left. And the interesting is O'Sullivan was a publisher, I think, for National Review. And look at National Review. I mean, it's essentially freaking, I mean, half left nowadays. You know what I'm saying? They still got some pretty good guys. Victor David Han Davis Hansen's on there, a couple other guys, but uh, Andrew McCarthy. But by and large, they're they're uh, you know they're like a just a a, a right version of being or a little bit to the right um, of the Atlantic Magazine, but just a little bit to the right of the Atlantic Magazine. I and mean, that's National Review. National Review is disgusting. Disgusting. Ah, oh. and Jonah Goldberg talk about a freaking uh, uh, misogynist. Hear him talk about uh, what's her name, uh, Trump's press secretary. It's like Jonah Goldberg. What the what 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 happened to these guys? It's the weirdest thing, man. It is is they hate Trump so much that they just it's it's just I still to this day don't understand it how much they hate that guy. It's weird. And Jonah Goldberg just you, saying some really creepy stuff about uh, whatever her name is McCavaney. Ugh, weird. Uh, Texas Earth Country. 
Texas country living. My first fund was a yeah Century Gift Trust. Yeah, right on, man, for the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on target year retirement funds? Not a fan. Uh, simply because they progressively get more into bonds. So I'm just not a fan. Also, if you're uh, 403B with 16K in it, returning 900 a year annually, would you convert that to cash and invest? If I have six, 16,000, I'm getting 900 a year annually. Is that a dividend or something? I don't get it. 900 divided by 16,000. Oops. I'm not, I'm not following the question, Kurt or Carl. That's 5.6%. I, I don't know. I don't know what you mean. 900 annually. Is that dividend? I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, uh, I listen to Clark Howard. Yeah. Uh, because that's all the older people listen to at work in the background. Does this date me? My first fund pioneers through AL Williams term life insurance and invested difference. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, Fidelity Puritan Fund in 1972 with Jimmy. Whoa, Jimmy, man. Whoa, I didn't know you're that old, Jimmy. Contra Fund in 1976. Holy crap, that's crazy. Contra Fund in 1976. Damn, dude, that's freaking crazy. And hopefully, you kept it the whole time. All right, my friends, looks like it's 8 30. I think I go try to find something, my beautiful spouse. Um, don't forget, if you are on the, the webinar on Tuesday, we will see you then. For it's, I think we got 12 people on there. I, um, so you want to be a financial advisor. Uh, looking forward to that. That should be a lot of fun, actually, because I do get a lot of people in second careers and stuff that want to become financial advisors. And I think I have some stuff that I can share with them that will help them as they uh, kind of go into their career. Unfortunately, a lot of people think financial advising is Okay, so Carl says uh, it's an annuity. Yeah, I would I would start uh, converting that. Sure, Carl, absolutely. Okay, right on. Yep, I would start doing that. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, well, as you Carl says, he stupidly put the annuity. He bought the annuity's first job out of college. And what are you gonna do? You still have it. You got sixteen thousand bucks, though, man. I mean, it's, it was better than having fourteen thousand bucks. So you got sixteen thousand bucks. I mean, could you have had 18? Sure. Could you have had nothing? Sure. So you got something. Yeah. There's nothing stupid about investing. You just learn. I'm just, that's all it is. You learn. And uh, you got many years of learning yet, as do I, as do all of us. All right. Uh, you're right on, guys. Well, I appreciate it. Stay safe out there. Philadelphia was insane. All, oh, Christina says, Philadelphia was insane all day. Just got home to leave the just got to leave the hospital, go home for the night. Stay safe out there, Christina. Freaking. They used to have that pretty good mayor in Philadelphia. Um, what was his name? A black guy, not that long ago. I liked him. I mean, he, he did not like the Republicans or Trumpster, but he was uh he he was he was old school. I forgot his name, but I liked him. Now they got some just other punk, and I just that's uh man, it's sad. All right, we'll see you guys. Uh, we're going to go watch a TV show. Thanks now.